All right, let's talk about how to get sort of a, a bootstrap CSS grid in place. And while I think that you should try to, I always tell people to embrace the flex, meaning uh, grid is by nature very flexible, very responsive, very able to sort of flex to the actual size of the content as well as how much extra space is uh, around, whereas these bootstrap based grids are extremely rigid in that you have 12 columns and you, uh, you start to add them up. So um, first of all, try to maybe adjust your design so that they work with how much content you have. But that said, uh, there is still valid use cases for having a very rigid um, grid system. So uh, what you can do is I've got this four items here. I'm going to go to my grid and chop it up into 12 different columns. So we'll go in here and we'll say grid template column. Uh, repeat 12, 1, F, R, and we will also forget the display grid on the actual item itself. Good. Now, and we'll put some grid gap on there. Beautiful. Now we've got 12 different columns, each one uh, eating itself up. Now I'm going to show you one little like bug that I ran into. I'm not sure if it's a bug or by design or, or whatever, but if one of these things has like West Boss in it and it's a bit wider, you'll notice that now they are not equal because what does FR stand for? Free space, right? And uh, what happens is it, the CSS grid lays the items out that it needs to first, and then we'll distribute the rest of the spots to it. So uh, this is eating into our free space. So what do you have to do? Do you have to take your 100% divided by 12 and make each one 8.3%? Well, that still doesn't really work because you've got this grid gap. So you have to like calc 8.3% minus 20 PX. Well, that also doesn't work because there's no margin on the left or the right. So, uh, or clack, you, you get the point, right? We're not going to, it's not ideal to have to, to be able to do something like that. So what I have found as a fix for that is uh, either you can go onto your item and give yourself a min width of zero, and that will make each one uh, actually the, the same size. And then you can deal with any overflowing text or whatever um, accordingly, which is great. Or... Um, and let me just double check that looks the same in Chrome. Yeah, so it works in Chrome as well. Um, but I think ideally you would do something like this instead. So let's bring back that actual error here and we will do a min max and you give it a min width of zero and a max of one FR that will give it a min width of zero. And then however, we still have to go into our item and give it a width of a hundred percent and that will snap it back to so what we're looking for. So uh, either one will work for you. Sometimes you're already going to be using min max, so you can use that and just pop the width on there. Otherwise, you can pop a min width and a width on each individual one. Let's go back to Chrome, double check. That's still looking exactly the same. Good. Now that we have this, um, what we can do is we can start to go spanning our, our different items. And uh, one cool way that we could do that is with CSS variables. So you could make like a whole grid framework and I'm sure there will be lots of frameworks announced where you have like, like span three or something like that and that will span three for you. Um, but we could also do something like this. We could say grid column and that is going to just span one. And each one of those will span one. That's That's the actual default. But we could change that to a variable where we could make a variable called span and set that to be one and then set that variable here to be span. And then in each of your items, you can overwrite that variable with an inline style attribute. And you could say something like dash dash span three. And then it's going to override that span variable on the item and it's going to kick in uh, to there. So whatever you feel like, I think some people still might prefer just a nice clean class of span three. Um, but it's kind of neat that you can also use CSS variables in order to, to, uh, dice it up. Similarly, you could also use that on your grid where you say style and you could say dash dash calls is equal to 10. And if I only wanted 10 columns, I could go into here and I could and say right here, var dash dash calls. And that will give me 10. And I believe var will also give you a fallback. So if it's not there, you can fall back to 12 rather than having to set a variable like I did here. I'll just show you two different ways that we can do it. So there we go. That's 10. And if I were to remove uh, the number of columns that we have, then it will fall back to 12. That is how you do a rigid bootstrap grid. Let's actually fill this up here. So seven. 
Good, so we've filled up all of our spots here. And then in this one, let's actually do another nested grid inside of it. So we'll go say dot grid. And then inside of that, we'll have items. Maybe we'll say style equals dash dash calls two. Item times two, one, and two. And that will dice up it further into uh, columns one and two. You will get the sort of the double grid gap happening here. And if you would like to get rid of that, uh, so you have clean lines, you can use a negative margin that would offset it the same amount of the grid gap. So hopefully that helps. Um, I'm still not sure if people are going to uh, migrate more towards using a CSS grid framework, like maybe foundation or whatever will come out with one or if this will just be enough. And uh, for, for myself, I, I haven't used a grid framework in, in many years just because of I think that it's easier to do it with Flexbox, but that's another personal choice that you can make yourself.